All right, so now you know how to post the journal entries into Ledger and then how to close these Ledger accounts as well and find out the closing balance, the carry down balance in any Ledger account. In this video, I'm going to talk about two nomenclatures that we use for these account balances. There are different types of accounts and you saw in some cases the uh, balance was written on the debit side. In some cases, the balance is written on the credit side. There are specific names that are given to these two types of balances. That is what we are going to learn in this video. So these were the accounts. Now again, let me take a different uh, color of pen so that I can distinguish the work in this video. So in the bank account, we saw that the total on the debit side was 430. So let me just say debit total, uh, maybe I can write it here, debit total was greater than the credit total. All right. Now, in this case, the balance is written on the credit side okay when this happens we say we conclude that bank account bank account has a debit balance one more time let me repeat this the total on the debit side is higher than the total on the credit side this phenomena is named as a debit balance. We say bank account has a debit balance. Uh, to understand it more, you know, more informally, you, you can think about it as follows. The bank account has higher total on the debit side. That is what it means. So bank account having a debit balance means that the bank account has a higher total on the debit side. You will see because uh, the total on the debit side is higher, the resulting balance is written on the credit side. But since the balance is being written on credit side, it does not make it credit balance. Do not get confused there. Often time I see that happening. Do not get confused by looking at the balance on the credit side and saying, hey, it's a credit balance. No. If it is written on the credit side, it is actually because the total on the debit side was higher and hence the definition of debit balance is that the debit side total should be higher. All right, let's do this for rest of the accounts as well. Shareholders capital, you see that the total on the credit side, so uh, credit side total is higher than the debit side total. There was actually nothing on the debit side. This means that the shareholders capital account had a credit balance. One more time, credit uh, credit side total is higher than the debit side total. Uh, I'm not regarding this balance here. Balance is not the total. Total was 100. Transactions were only on the credit side. This is a balancing figure. If credit total is higher than debit total, we say shareholders capital account has a credit balance, has a higher total on the credit side. As a result of this, you are going to write the carry down balance on the debit side. All right. The bank account here has credit total higher than the debit total. Therefore, the bank loan account has a credit balance. Let's go to the next slide. Here we have total on the debit side 100 and no item on the credit side. So debit total is greater than the credit total, which leads us to conclude that the purchase account has a debit balance. ABC, ABC account has actually a debit total equal to credit total. So there is no balance, uh, neither debit or credit. There is no balance in this account. Sales account, you have credit total, which is higher than the debit total, 
leads us to conclude that there is a credit balance in sales account. The PQR account has no balance. The, uh, the total on the debit side is equal to total on the credit side. So no balance. Building account has debit total higher. So debit total is greater than credit total leading us to conclude that building account has a debit balance. Depreciation account again debit total debit total is higher than the credit total therefore we conclude that depreciation account has a debit balance here next up is rent account rent account debit total is greater than the credit total therefore the rent account has a debit balance And then you have credit total for interest income which is greater than the debit total leads us to conclude that interest income account has a credit balance. The last account is bad debts account. The bad debt account has a debit total which is greater than the credit total leads us to conclude that the bad debts account has a debit balance debit balance there you go that's how you identify if a given account has a debit balance or a credit balance word of caution again please do not confuse the existence of this balance on the credit side and then use it to conclude that it has a credit balance that is not correct you have to compare the total the total on the debit side is higher uh, uh, then the credit side total therefore it is a debit balance as a result of this being a debit balance then you write this balance on the other side so that the total comes out to be equal that's it okay so uh, now we know how to identify the debit uh, or credit uh, balances in these accounts let us take one more uh, one more step and try to see is there a pattern uh, is there a you know rule which can be followed to just verify if we are you know, doing these things correctly and that can be done as follows. What we are going to do is we are going to list the names of the accounts which have debit balance. We are going to list those names here and we are going to list the names of accounts which have credit balance uh, and then you know I will do this discussion uh, after we do this. Let me get a different thing. Okay. Now I am going to start from the beginning let's say bank account bank account has a debit balance so i'm going going to uh, you know this slide and i'm going to write bank so bank account has a debit balance let me go back to the next account which was shareholders capital account shareholders capital account has a credit balance so i'll write shareholders capital account shareholders capital account has a credit balance so i am writing it under credit then let's go to bank loan account it has a credit balance so bank loan is also credit so i'm going to write here bank loan account next up you have purchase account purchase account has debit balance and abc limited has a no balance so purchase account debit purchase account is debit and abc limited does not have a balance so i'm going to ignore it for now and sale account has a credit balance pqr has no balance so sale account credit sales account let's look at more accounts you have building account which has a debit balance depreciation also has a debit balance so building and depreciation building account and depreciation account next up you have rent account which has a debit balance 
interest income has a credit balance so rent account and interest income has a credit balance here and finally you have bad debts which has a debit balance so bad debts is going to be written let me write it here bad debts all right so what i've done is i have uh, categorized all the balances into two which are the accounts which have debit balances which are the accounts which have credit balances and written them here uh, the objective is to see if there is a pattern let us identify if there is a pattern and we'll do that uh, in the following manner the bank the bank is what is the you know is this an asset liability income or expense the bank is an asset i'm going to write asset uh, the purchase account purchases are our expenses so i'm going to write expense here the building is an asset so let us write asset depreciation is an expense rent is also an expense and bad debts is also an expense slash loss all right so we've identified the nature you know the broad category where these items fall let us look at the credit balance accounts as well shareholders capital is a liability bank loan is a liability sales account sales account is an income and interest income of course is also an income the subcategories may vary but you know the top uh, level uh, categorization stays now is there a pattern to it is there a pattern to which accounts have debit balances which accounts have credit balances clearly there is there is asset and asset there are expenses 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 and expenses so in the debit balances you see no liability and no income which means under the debit the two heads which you can uh, you know easily identify or the pattern that you uh, see is that there are assets and there are expenses here on the other hand under the credit balance accounts you see all the liability related accounts and you see all the income accounts that is the pattern and this pattern is you know not random it's not uh, by chance uh, that is the design of the double entry system in the double entry system uh, when you follow the scientific method you will realize that all assets and expenses are always going to have uh, debit balance and all liabilities and incomes are always uh, going to have a credit balance that is the rule and this is a way to check as well if you have a building account which is giving you credit balance uh, well you know there is something which is uh, which is wrong which is not right so just relook at what you've done and correct your uh, mistake now there is this third category which says debit or credit uh, so there is there any account which could have a debit or credit account the answer is yes there is one account which is called bank account bank account could have a debit balance or it could have a credit balance as well now let me uh, illustrate that uh, here so this is the bank account for example bank account and I'm just drawing a sample account format. You have a debit side, you have a credit side. You have three columns on both the sides, but I'm just, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to give you an example here. So assume that, imagine the three columns on the both sides. So in the bank account, you, you write all the receipts here, all right? So you're going to write all the receipts here, and you're going to write all the payments here, okay? Uh, and... Can you have a case where receipts are more than payments? Of course, almost always, you are going to have cases where receipts are more than payments, which means debit total is going to be higher than the credit total, which means it has a debit balance. Now, let's assume another uh, scenario where the payments can be more than the receipt. Is that possible? 
Well, if you're talking about cash in hand, then you can certainly not pay more than what you have. However, when you have a bank account and for businesses, banks extend this facility where you can actually pay more than what you have in the account. This is called a facility of overdraft. When you have an overdrafting, over withdrawing facility at a bank, uh, you can make more payments. So in such cases, the receipts can be less and the payments can be more, but there is a limit to it. There is certain, uh, you know, limit to uh, based upon uh, the kind of business you do, the level of, you know, uh, transactions you do, the businesses extend you some facility that, you know, up to 50,000 overdraft is allowed, but you have to bring that money back within one month, two months. So it can, the policies of banks can vary uh, from, from uh, business to the other business, but the possibility exists. So there is this one account, bank account, which could possibly have any of the two types of balances. But all the rest of uh, uh, accounts, all assets and expenses are going to have a debit balance. All liabilities and incomes are going to have a credit balance. That is the rule. All right. So this is what we have learned in this video. The, these are the three rules which are going to be followed. They help us uh, check, double check if we are doing uh, the transactions, posting the transactions in the right manner. All right, we stop here. We have learned the process of posting. We know how to balance the accounts. And now we also know the nomenclature used for indicating debit balances or credit balances.